And uh, now we are going to ask the panel of reactors to give us their thoughts and uh, opinions on, on the uh, keynote speech of a lawyer and management practitioner and a recognized expert in public accounting, law and taxation, management advisory, investment banking, research, training and development, head of the Trust Banking Group and Trust Officer of the Philippine National Bank, which he has held since November 2009. And concurrently, he is serving his second term as President of the Trust Officers Association of the Philippines. Rafi finished his Bachelor of Science major in Business Administration at UST and is a nominee for both MBA at De La Salle University and Executive Master in Business Economics at the University of Asia and the Pacific. He has spent more than 15 years in the trust business and nine years in various branches. Prior to joining BNB, he was head of sales and distribution of Citibank, handling the Citibank savings franchise, and before that, he was senior vice president and deputy head of Metro Bank Trust Banking Group. During his banking career, he has served in various capacities such as personal account officer, cash officer, treasury sales officer, and head of various sales distribution team. Please welcome Mr. Rafael Yuste. And last but not least, We'd like to welcome Mr. Invite Mr. Philip Zeman, I hope I pronounced that properly, uh, of the CFA Society of the Philippines and the Vice President of Institutional Shareholder Services. Uh, in addition to heading compensation research in ISS Manila, Mr. Zeman also heads the internal data interpretations team, which analyzes complex governance data. He has, based, he has been based in Manila since 2008 and speaks English, Spanish, Italian and French, and soon Filipino we will. All right, please, Philip. So we will ask each of the reactors, starting with, uh, of course, the lawyer and the lady, uh, three minutes uh, on reaction on uh, Ed's speech. Uh, Ed, maybe we should also ask you to come up and join us on stage. Um, good afternoon. Everybody, we're given to react to the, to the speech, and our topic, which says uh, good corporate uh, governance makes excellent business sense, and I agree 100 percent that it really does make, have uh, excellent business sense. First of all, I'd like to thank IFC for uh, our uh, our uh, donor for this event. And I would like to uh, express my uh, sincere thanks for IFC for putting the shareholders, minority shareholders' rights as one of the top priorities in their uh, assessment of an um, investing company. So the speech um, pointed out to us both the advantages for to both the investor and the, from the corporate or the company's point of view, the investing side. And I guess uh, we are all convinced that it really uh, gives a premium if you follow good corporate governance practices. So it means that in this era, we cannot afford to be uh, complacent we have to be benchmarked against our neighbors, the ASEAN neighbors, and we cannot just apply our local rules and practices. So I guess from a minority shareholder's point of view, because I represent Sharefield, we really are in to this um, uh, advocacy of promoting good corporate governance because of the advantages that were mentioned. Thank you. Uh, investors, I think the, uh, the framework provided uh, is truly helpful. At uh, Deutsche Bank, for instance, um, when we accredit a borrower or an equity issue as uh, part of our universe, uh, corporate governance and transparency uh, would be one of the criteria in our scorecard. Um, when we do annual credit reviews of existing exposures, those would also likewise be there. 
Um, this is very important because we have seen in our past, for instance, in our emerging market, that there are certain uh, companies out there that totally disregard uh, minority shareholders' rights. And uh, as a minority, potential minority shareholder, we believe that the company that we will transact with has to protect us um, the same way that they, they protect their majority shareholders. Um, this is very important, as mentioned earlier in the talk, uh, in accessing the credit market. In an expanding economy like the Philippines, wherein almost all our sectors are trying to access the market, either the bond market or the equity market, to fund the expanding KTEX requirements, um, I think it would be uh, very helpful to the Philippine uh, uh, business sector to address these issues. And if you address it in your board level, as mentioned earlier, then it makes it a structure, it provides a structure and a framework by which a company can do business with the uh, private sector as well. Um, I think that's all I could uh, contribute. Thank you. I look at it from two points of view. One, as a financial intermediary, the trust, of the trust industry as an investor, and the trust institution as a corporation. The, from the point of view of the uh, demand side, I agree with Chris here that we do make that part of the requirements when we do our accreditation of issuers. It makes uh, business sense to include corporate organize for liquidity, for risk management, and all the factors mentioned earlier. We, the trust industry, we manage funds, not only of uh, the kind of individuals. We manage funds of orphans and widows. We manage funds for retail uh, OFWs, clients with 10,000 pesos, as well as clients with uh, billions. And we have to make sure that part of the process is the safety not only on the financial terms, not only looking at the profit of the company, but also on the continuity of the company uh, in terms of uh, the work composition, in terms of risk management, etc. Our clients, though, uh, are not yet at that level, meaning our corporate clients or individual clients do not uh, look yet for companies that have good corporate organize right, as part of their, uh, I guess, evaluation process uh, in terms of investing in companies. Having said that, we do step in and provide that aspect. So in our accreditation, we already include those criteria. Um, from the point of view of a trust institution, it's actually an eye-opener, primarily because we operate separate from the bank, right? So the bank has a uh, separate board of directors. We do not have a separate set of board of directors because we're a department of the financial institution of the bank. However, as, fund, as money managers and as trustees, we are equally responsible. Right? The same set of uh, criteria that was discussed earlier can actually be incorporated into the trust uh, organization to make sure that as money managers and as trustees, we exercise the same diligence, the same corporate governance in delivering uh, the management of the money of our clients. 